Um, thank you all for coming um, to this event this evening, um, which is on the occasion of uh, the exhibition uh, Alles equals Hood, all equals everything equals good, uh, by Anne Mie van Kerkhoven, who is next to me. The work of uh, Anne Mie van Kerkhoven uh, spans over more than four decades uh, of uh, experimental practice combining um, handmade imagery, computer-generated imagery, performance, sound, music, video, and language. But if I want to, and it's very wide and vast, um, but if I want to narrow it uh, for um, the purpose of this evening, I would like to highlight the fact that Annemie van Kerkhoven, she uh, uses aesthetics uh, as a tool for um, scientific research or methods of scientific research, rhetorics of scientific research, um, narration, historiography in general, history of literature, history of, uh, of uh, philosophy. But you also do the other way around, I think, Anemi. Uh, you also use rhetorics of scientific uh, research, um, methods of narration, uh, historiography and texts in general as a, as a tool for aesthetics. So you create this kind of hybrid mechanism that uh, uh, oscillates between different uh, disciplines, different methods, different forms of rhetorics to create something that I think uh, is not fully, yeah, is very unique in, in, uh, in the cultural, in the cultural um, field, in the art field. Um, um, and uh, we also have with us, we have the pleasure to uh, host with us uh, Julie Kaffmeyer, uh, a writer, a performer. Uh, if I can, uh, I don't know, some kind, uh, characterize uh, Julie's uh, uh, practice, I would say that uh, in her uh, texts, performances, uh, one of which we will shortly uh, uh, see, uh, Julie, um, let's say, throws, uses, utilizes uh, um, um, cultural cliches about femininity, but uh, not as a, some kind of static uh, image or static stereotype, but you, uh, she throws them into reality and she creates this kind of friction between um, yeah, stere st stereotypes about women and and real, yeah, re uh, real events, real, real occurrences, and this kind of friction uh, yields, generates, yeah, surprising and challenging and adventurous moments. I would say uh, that also challenges our perception and predispositions about femininity, but also about language and about uh, the body in general, maybe. Um, yes, so thank you all, uh, Annemie, Julie, thank you for joining us. We will start with a short movie by um, uh, Annemie. The abstract is not sexually stimulated. It's a very short movie that somehow can set the tone for whatever. It's, it's actually something that Genet, uh, Jean Genet said in his last um, interview with the BBC. Yeah. Isn't, isn't sexually stimulating, okay. yes. Yeah. I will and this is just uh, what, uh, what you will see is the animation of, a, of just a drawing that I make. I make uh, already from the beginning when I, when I left the academy in, in Antwerp, uh, I, I started making drawings uh, from my subconscious and this is one of the drawings that I animated. I yeah. see, but let's see what we will see. So maybe yeah. first we see and then okay. we yeah. say what we see. Okay.
didn't plan to talk about uh, the film, but can I uh, ask a question uh, uh, that somehow might uh, also um, outline uh, the topic, uh, the different topics we would like to um, uh, deal with in this evening. But uh, so you say the the abstract is not sexually stimulated. So I try to uh, share with you what in my conservative uh, mind uh, goes on. Uh, um, so let's say um, abstract art, abstract painting is, uh, yeah, there is the early abstract painting, let's say by Mondrian, that uh, always evokes some kind of idealized universe that is beyond reality, that is not uh, stained with the marks of reality, of real experience, but somehow conveys a higher realm of, um, yeah, of existence or of vision, yes, this is one thing. Uh, we have the basic uh, traditional um, uh, definition of abstract art is something that has no image, has no figure, and therefore has no body, and has no representation of body, which is maybe makes it yeah, not stimulating um, uh, sexually. Uh, and then, but then there is also the abstract expressionism, the, the, the abstract uh, painting, the action painting of after the Second World War in, uh, in, uh, in the US mainly, but not only, that, uh, yeah, recognized with a, a very assertive, uh, outgoing, uh, almost ejaculating uh, activity of alpha male that somehow uh, with no interruptions, uh, you know, uh, pour out, the, it pours out of them their body. Huh? So this is the, how I see it. And then what you do is create this kind of, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> um, I have to say that these drawings, I make them, uh, when I make them, sometimes I make them. Like it, it, in, in this year, I made them, last year I made some of them. Before in my life, I made them on a regular basis, but sometimes for a year I didn't. But it has to do with, it, it's when I make these kind of drawings, uh, when I feel very harmonious, and I have to say, when I feel, it's mostly, it actually in the beginning was, was only in the afternoon, but now it's anyway, any time, it can also be in the middle of the night. But it's when, and it, it, it has to do actually with some kind of an erotic, um, um, encounter that you have with reality. This, I cannot say it otherwise. And so you could say that um, I, I don't like to use the word uh, mystic, but it has to do with some kind of a feeling that you feel together with everything that exists mm -hmm. and that something comes out by itself. You feel good, you have materials, you have something that you can work on, uh, that you are used to and no, there is no pressure, no, but also no resistance, and things come out, and you are um, surprised what comes out, and, and actually from the beginning when I made these drawings and when I exposed them, yeah, I started to exhibit them, actually one of the first shows I ever did was in Sparendam, and, um, next to Harlem, um, and, but um, I have to say that these uh, drawings, yeah, now I, I forgot what I No, but these drawings that yeah. uh, are somehow uh, uh, erotic uh, because it has. Uh, yeah, no, it, 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 it's to do with an erotic. Um, yeah, begegnung. And I, no, I don't know the, the word in English. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, with, with reality. Okay. I have to say that, that you are feeling. Yeah, and, and, um, and, and from in the beginning when I, I, um, I made these drawings, people said, oh, you have to animate them or you have to color them. Or you have to... But for me, the drawings, I, I always uh, finish the drawings uh, when I, uh, I, I think it's, uh, it's enough. Mm -hmm. And I always think they are bad, but then the, the day after when you look at them or later, then you think, oh, wow, where is it coming from? But it's just your, your memories or things that you are... Uh, are, um, you cannot uh, say that first, you cannot verwerken, uh, verwerken, right. yeah, verwerken, I don't know how you say it in English, um, stays in your body and it comes yeah. out with me, it comes out in when I make drawings yeah. sometimes. And, um, but then, you know, when and I did this animation because I had a show with older drawings and I wanted to have 
something because I think I think the only um, exhibitions that I really like is when there's some kind of an electronic device running, you know, when there's an anim animation or a radio or a television, anyway, anything, and I want just I thought, yeah, I'm going to make an animation, and um, because it was it, I made it in 2000, it was the beginning when you could do that on your on your desk at home, and um, yeah, you know, I couldn't find a, a, a an end, mm -hmm. but I just put it there to, for the sound and for, for yes. the, that something was moving. And actually, I won a prize with it. It's very weird. And um, yeah, um, so, so it's, weir it's weird with this, with this kind of, this, why, yes. why I say this, actually it has no point. It has no point because what you hear, and what you see is, is, the, is trivial enough. It's, it's like a park next to where I live. Yes. And uh, what you hear is the dog, is my dog in, 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 in the leaves. And also the park is, of course, I don't, what I don't like about the park is that there's, you hear uh, a lot of um, sound from the highway. And that's what you hear. And that's all. That's really all. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, valid art. Uh, most of the time is pointless. It has no. Point it, has, is, yes. it has no yeah. purpose. Um, but maybe uh, just we stop here for the time yeah. being. But just use this, this, uh, this movie and your remarks on it as a teaser uh, uh, for what we can expect uh, during the evening. And this movie that combines, yeah, uh, something that is directed from the body, but also then you mechanized it. It has uh, this erotic figuration on the one hand, on the other hand, this abstract uh, uh, fields of color. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's a good, uh, it's a good uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, implication of what, what we can expect. So I stop us now for yeah. a short while and I invite uh, Judy Kaffmeyer. Uh, Ik heb, um, deze tekst is eigenlijk ontstaan toen ik alleen op een hotelkamer was en heel veel uh, zin had. Dat is het uitgangspunt. Ik lig op een bed in een hotelkamer in Montpellier. Hoewel het ten strengste verboden is, rook ik een sigaret. Ik tik mijn assen weg in de asbak een witte zwaan. Ik heb zin. Dat betekent dat ik iemand nodig heb. Zin, zin. Het voelt als... In een hoopvolle bui begeef ik me naar de gang van het hotel. Ik draag een kimono. Er staan hertjes opgeborduurd die vredelievend van het gras grazen. Ik heb een gespierde, gezonde, vriendelijke man nodig en alles wat ik krijg is een lege gang in een Frans hotel. Op de gang staat een verpleegster met een brancard. Ze zegt, madame, reprends votre calme. Ik klop aan bij kamer 212. Er ligt een platina blonde vrouw op bed. Ze lijkt op Lady Gaga. Ze scrolt op haar smartphone en eet chocolade van Tony Chocolonely. Ze huilt. Ik ga naast haar liggen. Haar gsm trilt op een opzwepend ritme. Zzz, zzz. Ik zeg haar... Geef toe aan de tinteling. Wie toegeeft aan de tinteling, ziet hieroglyfen van vrouwen met hun benen open. Ah. Ah. Reprends votre calme. Ik streel Lady Gaga's nekhaartjes en zeg, vind je ook niet dat we te veel praten? Zou je ook niet liever... Ta -ta -ta. Ta -ta -ta. Ik vind een afgekapt hand in de lege gang van het Franse hotel. De deur van kamer 214 staat open. Enkele nonnen masturberen met stengels van daliabloemen. Of de afgekapte hand misschien van hen is. Een van de nonnen zegt, vroeger roken we aan de handen van slapende schoolmeisjes. 
We kapten de handen af van de meisjes die zich bevredigden. We hebben ons bedacht. Nu liggen we. We bieden. Ha, ha, ha. Ik streel mezelf ongegeneerd met de afgekapte hand van een geil schoolmeisje. De afgekapte hand omhelst mijn borst de stof van de kimono in de grazende hertjes. Madame, madame, reprend votre calme. Een Engelstalige vleesetende plant op de gang zegt No one wants me. Ik lach en zeg, maar jij bent een plant. Ik leg de afgekapte hand rond de stengel en zeg Je moet blijven proberen vanuit Ha, ha, madame, madame, reprend votre calme. De verpleegster opereert Lady Gaga. Ze snijdt haar open. Kakkerlakken met een groene gloed kruipen uit haar buik, krioelen over elkaar. Ik buig me over haar en zeg. In je hoofd zweeft een juwelenkistje. Dat je over overgrootmoeder aan je overgrootmoeder gaf en overgrootmoeder aan je grootmoeder gaf. Een schat aan informatie, het genot van je voorouders en hoe dat genot... God zij dank, jou uiteindelijk bereikt. Ha! Miljoenen vrouwen die generaties lang. Ah, ah. Madame. Madame. Reprend votre calm. Misschien moeten Lady Gaga en ik ons toch eens laten nakijken. Wij geestesgestoorden worden opgenomen in een laboratorium. We bieden onze pols aan. De verpleegster spuit een fluogele vloeistof in ons en snijden onze schedels open. De vloeistof ligt onze hersenen op. Specialisten overwegen een lobotomie. Ze zeggen, deze meisjes zijn een gevaar voor de maatschappij wegens hun buitensporige geilheid. In kamer 216 speelt een man in kostuum met een Playstation. Avatars vechten met reusachtige hagedissen die giftige tongen hebben. Naast hem een aquarium met vrijende clownvissen. Mijn tepels bewegen, doen een dans met elkaar. Een experimentele wans. De gang is leeg. Een kakkerlak kruipt over mijn teen. De afgekapte hand graaft in de aarde van de plantenbak op zoek naar tunnels met de juwelenkistjes van onze grootmoeders, doosjes die openbarsten in ons hoofd. Er komen veren en glitters uit en dampen. Ik kus de aarde. Die plant weer van, no one wants me, no one wants me, no one wants me. Ik ga weer naar mijn hotelkamer zonder de valse hoop dat hier iemand zal aankloppen. Sigarettenpeuken stapelen zich op in de witte zwaan. Mijn kamer stinkt naar eenzaamheid. Dokters hebben me krankzinnig verklaard toen ze een microscoop op mijn clitoris hielden. Reprend votre calme. Ik doe een moonwalk op het liedje van Lady Gaga. La la la, la la la. Een oude, verimpelde vrouw kijkt naar mij vanuit de overkant. Ze wuift. Waarom is er godverdomme de hele tijd echt niemand, maar dan ook echt niemand, die op het eerste zicht... Ha, ha, een klaarkomende non slaat een kreet uit. Ah! Thank you, Julie. Um, we will try to top it up, but maybe. Uh, not top it up, it's, it's a joke, of course, but maybe to take uh, things that you were uh, elaborating and uh, introducing and somehow ground it within their different form 
uh, with regard to the work of, uh, of, uh, of uh, Anemi. Uh, and for this evening, I remember uh, learning about the work of Anemi and about uh, the Moral Armament uh, Project and the Head Nurse Project within the Moral Armament Project and its ties with Friedrich Nietzsche. And this through my uh, philosophical studies, uh, I learned something that all of a sudden popped in my mind, and it's uh, the preface of uh, uh, Beyond Good and Evil um, from 1885 uh, by Friedrich Nietzsche. And somehow I thought it can, it can um, yeah, also take things that uh, we try to uh, uh, revolve around um, uh, in this evening, but also explain things uh, in, in your work with regard to your approach to femininity, to the image of the female body, but also to philosophers, male philosophers, and in particular to Friedrich Nietzsche. So I start to read. Okay, and Nietzsche starts his uh, preface for Beyond Good and Evil as following. Suppose the truth is a woman, and why not? Aren't there reasons for suspecting that all philosophers, to the extent that they have been dogmatists, have not really understood women? That the grotesque seriousness of their approach towards the truth and the clumsy advances they have made so far are, unsuitables, are unsuitable ways of pressing their suit with a woman. What is certain is that she has sprung them, rejected them, leaving dogmatism of all types standing sad and discouraged, if it is even left standing, because there are those who make fun of dogmatism, claiming that it has fallen over that it is lying flat on its face or more, that dogmatism in, is in its last gasps. But seriously, there are good reasons for hoping that all dogmatizing in philosophy was just noble, though childish, ambling and preambling, however solemn, settled and decisive it might have seemed. And perhaps the time is very clear when we will realize again and again just what actually served as the cornerstone of those sublime and unconditional philosophical edifices that the dogmatists used to build, some piece of folk superstition from the immemorial, like the soul superstition that still causes trouble as the superstition of the subject or I, some wordplay perhaps, a seduction of grammar, or even over-eager generalization from facts that are really very local, very personal, very human, all too human. Maybe, before, maybe before I continue, I, am, I want there is complexity in the in your in the structure of your work, huh? which shifts from different uh, fields of knowledge, fields of the discussion. Uh, fields of practice, uh, but somehow uh, is uh, is uh, is unified through the the yeah through your personality and through your image, but more specifically through your avatar uh, uh, title, which you call head nurse. Maybe you yeah. So there is I can try to uh, outline a few of the things that I think uh, comprise it, but maybe you start with speaking about the project, the moral armament, and within it, the head nurse. And uh, yeah, maybe we take it from there. Yeah. In, um, in 1981, I started with my um, later husband, later he became my husband, with Danny DeVos, performance artist. We started an independent, independent experimental art space in Borgerhout, next to Antwerp, where we only showed um, um, works of people from all over the world, from young artists or older artists, that uh, were always on the on the on the verge of good and evil. That were really extreme. It was really extreme art, very radical, very brutal, also. And and uh, and anyway, um, this name. I mean, I was already. Busy as an artist when I met Danny, and he's a he is a he was then a body art performer, who, who was very extreme. And I thought this name uh, Club Moral 
thinking about Club Mediterranee, but also as moral, the, the word moral, as some kind of an, um, yeah, in, in school you could choose between um, lectures in, 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 um, in, uh, in religion or in moral. I mean, it, it, for me it was very weird, you know, as a Christian. And uh, what did at, you at choose? Time. Hmm? What did you choose? You know, I never knew there was a choice. Oh. So it, it was, um, in, 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 in theory it was there, but I never heard about, I only heard about it later. But um, it's, it's um, so we did, we worked on, on this project in, in, in Antwerp, uh, also as a noise group, and we did um, things together with, um, like with um, Joke and Alex from, from the Bos for years. To, I mean, we had a lot of exchanges also with people from Amsterdam, from the NL Center, and so, so all, actually all over the world. But then when I, I became 40, eh, um, I had some kind of a crisis, a midlife crisis. Then eh, we start, we stopped with with um, with um, with actually with our club because uh, we only attracted like six people, six people in the end, and who are really making things, especially to to fit into the into the the format actually, which was of course not uh, the which was was completely out of the, I mean, it was not uh, good and. Um, so at a certain point, I've, I've been working a lot um, um, on, uh, on, on, on the image of, of nude women, but I'm not going to be more, because I can speak for ages, you know. And, but I, I, it, it's for, I was always triggered um, of nude women out of the uh, very cheap um, uh, press um, uh, of these little books uh, from... Um, beginning of, of the 20th century until the sexual revolution and that were made actually for 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 ersatz um, sex of men eh, to, to masturbate anyway um, I, I told these women they were very generous in their way and I wanted to reuse the these images and um, by a coincidence also from in the early 70, 70s I was um, um, I was involved with young Germanists, um, linguists from the, um, from the university in Antwerp, who were um, then uh, already busy with knowledge representation, which became the field of artificial intelligence. So there were these two things that were inspiring me a lot. So uh, when I became 40, um, I thought, yeah, where is this uh, fascination, this obsession of me? Where is this leading to? Because they were all, I was always combining these things, this, what, what I could read or what I could find about um, um, new technologies and about knowledge representation and then about nudity and, and about lust and uh, um, the so. Co so the commodity that is made out of lust. Ersatz um, in, in, in uh, on social and economic level and so and um, I found by accident a book of a sect an American sect called Moral Rearmament mm -hmm. and I said yeah I'm going to use okay. that and uh, what I did was I'm um, I wanted then to make some kind of a project I didn't know what to do but I was then invited for 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 something in Brugge and what I did in for 96 days I I combined a nude woman to um, a, a, an image of a nude woman out of my collection that I, in, in, in between, I had on my database, eh, in, um, um, in my computer, and I sent it in 96 days, there were 96 uh, words out of rep knowledge representation thermodynamics. And um, what I did was I made um, structures in, 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 the, in, in, the, in the women that I found, uh, the images, and I, out, out of these structures, um, in this list that I made of all these events together, I made an um, animation film. Yes. And I wanted to do a big project, which I would call then uh, Moral Rearmament, because this was in the beginning of, um, um, what, what can I say, um, um, yeah, the technology for uh, the, the common man, how is it called again? Um, yeah, it is a name. The I, technology of the common. Well, yeah, I mean that that everybody could buy a, a computer. It's called uh, consumer electronics. Consumer electronics. Eh, it was in in um, that was the beginning. So um, I told um, I, you have Big Brother at this idea of Big Brother. So I I said yeah I want to 
be head nurse. Uh, and also as the assistant of Dr. Nietzsche, uh, looking at the morality, the new moralities. So and I in, so what I did was, I, with, the, with this combination, I started to make some kind of an animation film because I have a bit of a, pro I have a problem because it's weird that um, you are, were speaking about it. Um, I've once, um, but years and years later, uh, I've been li I, I was invited in in 2010 to uh, lie in a, in, um, in in a scan um, a PT per per what is that? Uh, uh, MRI scan. MRI. Yeah, and and it was a, 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 a an art and science project in Leuven, and uh, some artists were invited to make drawings in the PR scan, and we were in in, in actually. Uh, inserted with um, yellow, um, with, flu with fluorescent um, um, Fluid. radioactivity, but it was very small. Eh? But it turned out that my whole brain was lighting up at the same time. And with normal people, it's only one or two fields that, and that's why I have no hierarchy in my brain. So what I do mm -hmm. is I, I take lists from everywhere that I like, I, I really like lists, you know, and structures yes. of other people, and I, I then combine Adapted. them, and I make work with these things. Yeah. So I try to summarize yeah. uh, what you just said, uh, which yeah. is plenty. So first, uh, there is the uh, your fascination or your research with uh, seductive images of, uh, of, uh, of women from, uh, yeah, from early... 20th century mm -hmm. uh, pornography, soft pornography, until the sexual revolution. And it's interesting because uh, in the passage I just read by Nietzsche, he compares, uh, uh, when he compares the truth to a woman, he compares the, the obtaining of the truth as a process of seduction, revelation, discovery. Truth is what we seduce to appear. So the truth is what we uh, reveal, with what we try to to, to unfold. So in this sense, there is there is a, a connection to 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 your project beyond the the, the 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 direct connection to Nietzsche and to to the head nurse as a, the assistant of Nietzsche. But um, yeah, and then you uh, choose 96 images out of this database of of uh, seductive images of uh, of nude women, and then you attach to each image a word. Yes, and then you create some kind of diagramma or structure or me or mechanism that uh, somehow yeah. imitates mm -hmm. processes of knowledge represent of knowledge obtaining. But uh, maybe it's also interesting to say that uh, I I always connected then an, an image of a woman with a word, mm -hmm. and what I did was then I because the, most of the images were in color, mm -hmm. and so I I made them t all to the same format in black and white. Mm -hmm. And then I transformed them, and actually I gave the the the, the word. I, I inv reinvented the word, you know. Yes. I, I gave Can the word give back to the to, to, to subconscious, mm -hmm. because the only way to change the world is actually to reinvent the everything that is that the memes around words, you know. What because the word in itself has no sense. Mm -hmm. So it's it's all the connections around the word that make it what it is. And that's what I did. I gave it back. I gave the women, I, I, because of course, there is a connection between um, the, the language and the female. I mean, it's, it's of course, but yes. we're not going to talk about that. Eh? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We can, but, uh, mm. but uh, even if we don't talk about it, what you definitely did is that uh, as Nietzsche opposes, uh, through the comparison of the truth to, the, to women, he opposes dogmatism, huh? and dogmatism mm -hmm. is exactly this, that there is a fixed meaning to a word all the time. And what you try to show is that the meaning is, uh, is uh, contingent, it's, it's based on a, on a concrete encounter with an image, and therefore mm -hmm. it changes the word of the meaning, but also mm -hmm. gives meaning to the image, mm -hmm. uh, etc. Yeah? So can I say it like this? Yeah, of course, a fixed meaning of a word is actually all, because in the, in the beginning it has no sense, but after a while when there is a consensus 
about this word means that, then it can start to be a tool. Yeah, but in, the consensus is on a social general level. You yeah. you gave it meaning on a particular private level. Yeah, but level. I don't. I gave. I took the meaning away, you know, mm -hmm. and I gave it back to. Co I actually I turned it into colors. Okay. Because they were, then I, I gave them a different color. I gave them always a color in in. Um, inspired by the by the word, but then mm -hmm. the word vanished, you know, okay. and it became color again. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And yeah. maybe it's a good moment to watch uh, the movie, the, the movie yeah. Moral Armament from yeah. 1996, 1998. 98. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So. Yeah, and I have to say that um, it, it, it's the beginning of a project that, that lasted for 10 years. And uh, normally, when you start a project, you have like some kind of a synopsis or your plan of a theory. And actually, the movie was uh, the plan. It, it, when I made the movie, this became the plan. So the movie foresaw the project? No, it's what not foreseen, no. It's just, uh, it was what it is. OK, it, let's, it, yeah, yeah. let's see, and maybe we, yeah. we understand better. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. 
do move into the city, it will not be to a house. They will consider themselves fortunate to find any small place on the edge of the pavement where they can build a shelter. Beautiful, thank you. Um, I'm trying to, yeah, maybe you can uh, describe in your words, but I'm just trying to say what I saw, okay? So you take, so there is the, in a way you question and you force us to question the female nudity uh, or the cliche of the female nude huh? in the, from the, the commercial female nude, huh? let's say. So what you do, you then you, uh, you uh, mark the structure somehow of the body, but the contour, the structure, mm. you saturate it chromatically, you superimpose it with exercises of uh, basic geometry, of how, how yeah, you immediately no. say no? No, <clears throat> what I did was uh, when I um, uh, then first had my computer at home, what I started to, uh, to is to scan all the, uh, not everything, because it was impossible, but a lot of, um, uh, of, of the pictures of, of the magazines that I had, at the, uh, that I still have, and um, I started to put them in maps, different like uh, women looking in, in the camera uh, while showing her breasts, or uh, women um, completely nude, only with a belt on, and so, and, um, so I had different, I had 12 or 15 different kinds of of um, yeah, maps with different uh, um, where and, and in, um, it was very because I worked on it for ten years and what I found out is that, that a lot of the the ways uh, women are showing themselves in these movie uh, in these um, magazines um, little booklets that um, it, it refers to to um, women pictures from 2000, 3000, from the origin of our species, actually, from the little um, statuettes yes. that they find in, in um, from, from ancient history. And it, it has to do with, with the women uh, of fertility and women yes. and so on. And anyway, um, this is, um, these are very loaded images and still, it, it, they, they, these, um, the way they, the women are presenting their bodies has still a very Im big impact on contemporary men, yes. actually. I mean, until the se sexual revolution, because of course, then a lot of, a lot of things changed. But this is what I did. I started actually with, from these maps, you know. And what I also wanted to do is, I wanted to, to create um, some kind of an alchemistic work wherein that one thing transforms into another thing. Yes. And uh, something looked at in a ne negative way because it, these, the, these, um, these booklets or this um, phenomenon of uh, having all these images to create artificial lust, and it was always, has always been on, on, you know, it, 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 in a negative field of, of, of perception. And I wanted actually to, to make it positive from the point of view of women, because of course you have to see, I made this in 86, and this was a completely different time than it is now. Yes. And, um, and um, as, as a woman, you didn't have any voice, actually. Nobody took you serious when you made art that was not in, 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 in the tradition of male art, what, what was historically built in the last uh, 200 years in books um, that when it didn't um, add to the chain of that, mm -hmm. then it was not good art. I, I, I think there is still um, some consensus in a way that what I make is not really good art, but Marcel Duchamp said, bad art is also art, so for me it's mm -hmm. okay but that it's art, you know. There is consensus that it's very good art also. Yeah, anyway, um, of course when you do it for such a long time, after a while, you become yes. an expert in some kind of a, of a no, field. So you know? Duchamp's, yeah. uh, Duchamp's um, yeah, uh, yeah, he did. He saw it in. Uh, he yeah. didn't see it in immediate, uh, immediate uh, range of perception. He saw no, it but, in. But uh, you, you have done then these women, and then the, the fact that it's in, the, it's, that he's, it has these five alchemistical steps eh? yes. from uh, that goes from 
annihilating everything what is already there to um, to some kind of an you know, uh, 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 outgloeien, out and in the end you have a residue where you can go on with. And um, so you try to. And but, but there's also other fields, you know, also. Um, Wapening, eh, dus um, armament, eh, dus um, male power. And, but then you have also like the idea of um, going into space as some kind of, an, um, as some kind of an, um, a way to escape from all negativity that's going on in the world. And then another thing is also about uh, actually about um, um, you know, making yourself beautiful with uh, art, especially as yes. for men, as for women, with um, with and, and making yourself more beautiful. And so so armament so. also is uh, is the idea. Yeah, of, uh, but I want it like some kind of an amalgam of all these different things, yes. and I put it in in some kind of a structure. And this was what I'm going was going to work with, because. Uh, I, um, so there is I, a I needed something to, to hold on. There is yeah. a futuristic level, like you made it into yeah. science fiction, launched yeah. into outer yeah. space, but then you also find the archetypical yeah. uh, element within the yeah, yeah. within yeah the very yeah. Commercial. But you can. I, I'm, I'm born in 1951, so you have to understand that I'm really raised with with uh, all these rockets and and. Uh, and uh, with the beginning the of space of, of space race, uh, space race uh, uh, that was really fantastic mm -hmm. uh, to to experience that from in the beginning but also there was a lot going on in the in the 50s and 60s about um, brainwashing uh, and the brain uh, so, so you so um, the, the, you you have to see all these the, i'm really a child of my time you know and then, then i've been an, an, um, an uh, a student in the 70s, so everything was very conceptual. I mean, we, we came then from alle, uh, alle macht aan de, aan, aan, aan de verbeelding, eh, verbeelding aan de macht, and it turned out uh, that it immediately, somehow, in one year, it, 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 it changed into uh, conceptualism. So it's all my struggle against yes. or, or dealing with the things. It's actually maybe not struggling, but that's what you see. And I could not, like m maybe other people, uh, when they study philosophy or psychology or, uh, or economical uh, studies or rechte and uh, laws and so, you can think in a tradition, but I couldn't do that. Yes. I have a very limited brain in a way. Because and I have to make things, and while making, I the things um, start to become um, That's fascinating. real. That's fascinating. Yeah. And also, you speak about a, a process of hybridity and uh, mm. and self-invention, reinvention, some yeah, kind yeah. of also like uh, the 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 work of the bricoleur somehow mm. that you uh, amalgam amalgamate yeah. uh, etc yeah. it's very it's very yeah you know, that's why because i'm now i now i'm now finishing a book of my writings from 1976 until I mean, from 1980 actually it's it's a it's a, a special I mean, it's 40 years of my my um, um, my uh, we prepared, working as an artist. We prepared some text to 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 read. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but maybe it's uh, it's not necessary, or you still you still uh, think, or yeah, maybe we. You, wa you want me to write uh, read two maybe, texts? Yeah. Maybe two texts before we uh, approach our guests with the questions and answers. Ah, yeah, good, yeah. But the the text we were uh, compiling for this event uh, has to have to do with the. Uh, your uh, your work with philosophers and philosophy, yes? Yeah, and yeah, of, of course. Uh, but you do something with it that is not yeah, traditional, yeah. like uh, yeah. you, what you do with art, of course. Yeah, but I have to say, when when I was a student, I started to read together with um, logics of Wittgenstein, uh, the Sade. I was starting, and I had a subscription on the New Scientists about new te technologies. <coughs> But then, of course, very easy, very quickly, I I found out that there is a consensus that women women cannot think logically. I mean, that was a consensus there then eh, in the 70s. That's Still, that's very logic logical. Not, yeah. And anyway, um, so and that philosophers um, in, in philosophy uh, after um, um, the first philosopher. Um, women were excluded uh, from the the sect of. Philosophy. So I always, in my, uh, especially in my the beginning of my writings and all my work, it was uh, me fighting against the fact 
that I couldn't be a philosopher because I was a woman, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, you are, uh, yeah. Anyway. But, and, but, but you the are, uh, for me, you are. Uh, you are, I don't know. A but certain it, kind of a particular. A certain kind, yes. So, um, yeah, I, 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 um, I, there, is, there is this book that will come out, yes. uh, and it will be presented at the end of, of the year here in, um, in, uh, in, um, in West, uh, but uh, uh, in the meanwhile, Ori asked me to find some um, remarks on, no, on we philosophy. Had this, eh? yes, we had this idea together. Together, yes, yes. and uh, of course we are not going to, because it's, I worked on it for two weeks, and then we, I found out it's 15 pages. That's too much. No. Eh? So um, you are not, we are going so now we are we chose it. two. Eh? Yeah, we two. chose the, the first one we chose is from uh, 25 Mars, uh, 1986. Yes. Ah, oh. I think from 1990. Ah, this is the second one. It's ah, it, where is the first one then? No, no, let's do the second one from 26 May. Yeah. Yeah, I was. I will say it in 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 Nederlands. Eh? Yeah. Ja. <coughs> dus 26 mei 1990. Ik hou van dogmas, wetten en restricties. Al is het om hun uiteinde af te tasten tot waar nog net gegaan kan worden en daarna verder. Want eigenlijk zijn mensen dieren en het allermenselijkste aan hun mechanisme is de drang driften te leiden, aan banden te leggen als bescherming tegen zichzelf. Het is daarom dat ik met een zekere warmte alle instituties aanschouw. Ze in hun context te zien baden, botsend en draaiend. Ze koestert als verworvenheden zeer dierbaar. Regels en structuren, opsommingen en onderverdelingen liggen me daarom aan het hart. Ze stralen een goed gemeende bemoeizucht uit die heilzaam werkt. Ja, en dan de next one. Uh The first one, which is, when we is it? That is, yeah. But I think also maybe it's a, it's a good moment if I can stop you now. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, that you somehow uh, gave your version, your wording. Uh, you gave your version, your wording for, uh, yeah, the uh, Freudian uh, outlook of uh, of, uh, of yeah. civilization as a, as restrictions of uh, as a restriction of uh, inner urges uh, and uh, which somehow I think uh, uh, closes a loop very interesting loop uh, with mm -hmm. what we started with and also with the, with Julie's uh, performance about uh, yeah about eroticized uh, appearances uh, of women and stereo erotic mm -hmm. stereotypes and how they somehow operate in uh, in uh, in life and in art huh? uh, yeah okay so maybe it's a moment to ask uh, our guests uh, whether there are any questions that they can before we we go to a, a break and then to um, a screening of a longer movie yes uh, remarks questions complaints you mentioned that you mentioned that there was a particular year where the power to the imagination changed into conceptualism. Do you remember what year? Just curious. It was in the 70s. Yeah. That's what you said. I think it, it was actually, it was 1970. It was 69, actually, at the end of 69, 1970. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm just curious. We saw yes. together, actually. Yeah. 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 But it's very weird because at that moment, I mean, maybe yeah, I think it's it's true that at that moment you also had a lot of that a lot of men started to I mean, uh, men artists start to uh, make photos of themselves as women. I don't know. I think so. Jurgen Klauke, yes, uh, no. mm -hmm. and I, I everywhere in all the in all. Uh, no, but yeah. So he's, he's, because. In the beginning, when I, I started to um, to make uh, exhibitions, uh, I couldn't choose between image and words. You know, I, I, it was very late. I, mean, I never, I, actually, I never chose between one or the other. And the only places, the, the, the first exhi exhibitions that I could make that was in Amsterdam, in other books and so, art something, and uh, these were all places. Also, I, I had one in. in, in in Los Angeles and so, and these were all places run by gay people. Mm -hmm. That was the only, only um, region or the only field 
in, in human society where people were open to hybridity because the artwork was very, very constricted. Depends yeah. where, but I can understand what you, you said, yeah. what Anthony yeah. was asking. Is that, is that, and it has to do also with this conceptualism also, turning into a, because this very free, um, yeah, before this very freedom, also with, um, uh, with sex and everything, and that it turned, uh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, to turn into the, the world into a world, yeah. huh? which is what... For people, for you to make, to, to make theories about it, I, I, I only feel or see what, and, and you, you, as an artist, you make things mm -hmm. and, and you work with it, you know, and you are then making it. it, it I don't know, but of course, of course, that uh, yeah. when you reduce the world into a text, huh? into a world, huh? like conceptual art uh, yeah. was trying to do, of course, you lose you lose the body, yeah? and you lose. Uh, yeah, but it's simply a very yeah. good question. But uh, yeah, <laughs> a good I answer. Have to, uh, G uh, also, yeah, good yeah, answer. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anything uh, more uh, concrete? Yes. Voila. Uh, could you could you explain me from which emotions you worked with? Uh, these pictures where, where women are, are exposed as, as, as commercial uh, erotic uh, sales uh, promotion. Yeah. Or what morality is, is behind it or it's not, uh, no. maybe not? It's maybe the beginning, it's not the end, if I can. Um, no, it's just fascination actually and some very friendly emotion actually. And uh, a bit envious that they are so free in showing themselves and uh, are so happy, they, they, for me they, um, they uh, show some kind of unhappiness with their sexuality that, um, like, that you think is normal, as a, as a, that is, is very spontaneous, and uh, that is the only fashion, uh, yeah, emotion, fascination and uh, interest really in... Uh, and maybe envy? Envy. No, I have to say that, of course, I was a very big fan of Brigitte Bardot, eh? like when I was a kid, and I thought that when you get older, I mean, when you get mature, you get big breasts, eh? and uh, that it all comes from by, by itself, and that, but that's not true, of course. Not everybody has this uh, ability of being so sex, sexy and everything. But envy, I've never been envy. I, I, of course, I would have... I would have liked to be like that, but envy, no, but actually when I, wa when I was very young, I always thought, oh yeah, maybe I would like to be an entrepreneur or so, yeah, to be in a bar and then uh, be friendly to men and then drink with them, champagne at the bar, and, but of course that, that's very, um, I'll say the very um, naive, eh? because it's very naive because it's a, also a very hard world, world. but um, I also we wanted to become a go-go girl and so. So I, I, that was really a part of my um, fantasy as, as, a, as a young girl, what I wanted to be uh, in, for the, in the future. But um, it, it is also so, of course, uh, from very young, my, uh, my parents said, yeah, Annemie is an artist. And, um, so I wanted to go to the, the academy very early, but they didn't, I, only, I had to wait until I was 18 to go to the academy in Antwerp. But what I, want, I found so interesting about artists is that they are, I, for me the definition of an artist, but that's also something from the 50s and the 60s, was that people who draw nude, who, uh, yeah, who make pictures with nude pe people, you know, and um, that, um, that interested me also, and that's actually why I wanted to become an artist to to paint nude people. That was a very that was really an um, because I've always um, had a problem with um, with um, you know, say the, with um, lies and with not showing what is really there, with trying to find out what is real and. Um, 
of course, when you're in the academy in Antwerp, there was a very classic academy. We had a lot of nude drawing. But when I left, you know, I, I didn't have, uh, it was stopped. Like uh, there was, uh, like, for, uh, but for instance, in Prague, you can, you can um, for the rest of your life, you can go uh, to the academy in the morning and make, uh, they have nude classes, you know, there. But in Antwerp, it was, of course, not possible. So what I did was I found, uh, by accident, these very cheap uh, booklets with nude women. And that's, and, um, you know, I started and... Uh, I, I remember the Lach. Ah, yeah. But that was very, uh, yeah, you, that's Dutch, of course, yeah? Mm. Yeah, yeah, but that was a little bit rude. I mean rude, not, this was not, not, nothing romantic about it, eh? It was already during the sexual revolution, Lach, yeah. Yeah, because what I what I think is so interesting, because I still make art with with uh, starting from these magazines from the from the 40s, 50s, 60s, and what I is so interesting for me is the filters, it, because when you make a a, 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 a a magazine or when you make a publication, the, it, you always have restrictions, of course, of of the medium, but also when it's commercial. There, there are questions and there's things that are not shown or are shown, are shown in, a, in a hidden way. And actually, that is, there are things that I can work with. And to, to make it, uh, and then when I combine this these, um, these content with uh, co other content from now, I can reveal sometimes really truths that I'm even not aware of. And it's just in working them, working them with, with them, that um, it's like you're making a sculpture, you know? It's, it's just, uh, you start with something, with, with an, yeah, with an, an, an element, an L, 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 was it, with material, that's my rough material, such a, a magazine, and then I start to sculpt it, and then uh, sometimes it becomes really a, a relevant um, statement also what is going on, on what is going wrong, or what could be done better, what's, or, or what is very good in society, and it's not, not, not always about going wrong, eh? No, um, yeah. Yeah, so it's fascination, it's about actually. It's about beauty, also. Beauty, it's beauty, yes. Or, mm. yeah. I, I would not call the people that you saw in Lach beautiful, eh? Yeah. No, it's not, no, it's no, they, they were supposed to be perfect. <laughs> yeah. But the, and that was for commercial reasons. And they were just to please the men. Yeah. yeah. Like for sure, in those days. Yeah. Yeah. But then, okay. it's, and of course, it's a challenge as a woman to reuse these things. Yes, eh? and also sometimes and to, to, women to, yeah. internalize what yeah, men yeah. expect from them, expect from them. So yes. Uh, it's, a, it's a chain reaction. Eh? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, Thank you. <laughs> mm. um, you said you work with your your, your material is from in, uh, is from before the sixties. Do you also find images um, modern, more modern images which you can use? Uh, yeah. 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 I use. Um, <coughs> Regularly, um, images from um, like uh, these very hardcore uh, magazines from Berlin and so, uh, and also they are also made in Amsterdam. Um, very hardcore, mo mostly homosexual, uh, um, um, home erotic, home erotic, and also sadomasochist, and also like a very luxurious um, uh, from Vogue or Numero of, of Paris. But there has to be some kind of a decadent angle to it. And then I can work with it, yeah. Okay. Yes, of course, yeah. Okay, that's a very interesting note. Uh, so maybe if I can uh, suggest to, we do like an intermission, uh, we socialize, uh, we mingle, and then we uh, do like an open uh, screening of uh, of uh, of, uh, um, the uh, of the last movie. You want yeah. to say a few words about it? Yes, because uh, what you saw now was uh, the beginning of this art um, of the moral rearmament, and it lasted until um, 90, 
2003-2004, and then I made uh, Roort because the last uh, one of the last, um, um, yeah, uh, I have to say in 98-99 I started. I, I was actually invited for a big project of Sony Laboratory in Paris to make um, um, VR spaces for avatars for um, scientists to meet in. But um, what I did was I made then um, artificial rooms, always dedicated to a um, philosopher a of philosopher, the yeah. a philosopher of the. Uh, starting from the Baroque, eh, Descartes, yes. uh, Spinoza, eh, yeah, and, um, and this is the basis for the yeah, no, and, but but uh, it's it, I I started making, I I had been working already for a year on these uh, pay on these, uh, and um, but then they stopped the the money, but then I recuperated it for my own, so I I kept on doing that, and and so in the end. I made some kind of an, uh, I made then a uh, head nurse, um, Rorty the headroom, I called it, because Rorty Richard is a pragmatist, Rorty, yes. Richard Rorty is an American um, uh, pragmatist um, philosopher who actually announced the, the, the death of philosophy. You yes. see, yeah, in a way. And um, which was very interesting, and I made then some kind of an, um, um, an interactive uh, work um, with a uh, lot of possibilities, also be, uh, it was there was also an angle of uh, satanism in there. Okay. And th th there was these uh, uh, fascistic uh, uh, satanic ritual called the law of the trapezoid, and um, that was a um, um, uh, 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 ritual um, where people came in and and underwent some kind of a magic. Uh, uh, spelling through what what's, was happening, and they had to leave the room on all fours like animals. Ooh. Yeah, and anyway, um, that was also one of the things, but it, it resulted then, in because it was a very com complicated uh, uh, thing to make, and I, I, I only could show it three times, And uh, but then I made some kind of an, um, a, a computer regist registration of the, st the 19 steps, because it's 19 philosophers, because 19 is a number of the philosophical stone. You see, mm -hmm. it's the stone with which you can turn lead into gold. Okay. In the alchemistic, yeah. yes. um, and, and anyway, um, it is in 19 steps, and um, you will see it's yes. uh, every all the different steps you can see, and you can walk in and out because. Actually, it's 19 times different, but it's the same. Yes, but so it's 19 yeah. short films somehow. Yeah, yes. yeah. So we do animations, it short yes. animations. And yeah. uh, we will show it uh, like an open door screen. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, you, we can go. In in what? Now. In 15 minutes or so? Or, um, yes. In 20. We can minutes. start yes. actually immediately or no. No, no, let's no. let's uh, let's get, no the, the the people who want to see Drink. it fully. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you, Anemi uh, van yeah. Kerkhoven. Thank you, Julie Tafmeyer.